All right, what's going on guys? Coach Alfred here and today we are going to help your game. Listen, like it or not, tennis is a game of errors. You know that 70 to 75% of all points are won or lost because of an error. So today, I'm gonna walk you through five laws that are guaranteed to help you raise that percentage, which means less errors, which will hopefully mean more fun and more victories for you on court. So if you're ready, sit back, because we're jumping right in. All right, now the first law is called the law of cross court, and I know you know why, because look, all the greatest players, they live and they die hitting cross court. Now there's a logical reason for it, watch. Baseline to baseline, that is 78 feet long. That's all the real estate we get to play with. But if you start going cross court, I'm talking singles corner to singles corner, something magical happens. I mean, that 78 feet multiplies. That 78 feet turns into 82.5 feet. For all of my math scholars there, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, that's four and a half feet of extra ground to play with. All right, so there's another reason for hitting cross court, and that has to do with the net. If I measure this net right here, we're gonna get right at three feet. Three feet is the standard height of the center of the net. But if you notice, as we look out, you can see the net gets higher because at the net posts, they're three feet, six inches. What that means is the further out you go, the higher the net, the higher the net, the more likely for the ball to hit that net. We don't want that to happen. So if I'm hitting down the line, not only am I having to redirect the ball, which is low percentage, not only am I hitting on a shorter court, 78 feet, but now I'm also hitting over a higher net. That's a lot of things to overcome, which is why that's the lower percentage shot. So if you want to elevate your percentages, we go cross court. Bigger court, not changing directions, and lower net. All right, the next law is called the law of margins because far too many players play with low margins. What I mean by that is consider the net. A lot of players love to hit that ball hard and low. I mean, they are clearing the net right here. The problem is, is that unless you're perfect, you're gonna tank a lot of balls into the net. I tell my players constantly, I would rather you hit the ball long than into the net because at least if you're going long, you can use spin to pull it down. Maybe this miraculous breeze comes through that stops the ball short, but there's no hope for a ball that goes into the net. So if you watch the best players, they're actually playing with safety. They're actually hitting the ball over the net. Sometimes three, four, five, watch Nadal. He hits six, seven, eight feet over the net because they've got to give themselves margin. If they don't hit the perfect shot, there's no real chance of it hitting the net. And the same holds true when you're going for lines. So many of my players, they'll set up and they'll rip that inside out forehand and their brain is targeting the line. If you're off just by a little bit, you've lost the point. What the best players do is, they actually aim about three to four feet inside the sideline, about three to four feet inside the baseline. All right, now the third law is called the law of spin because spin is your friend. And a lot of people, they fall so in love with this hard and flat thing. We've already talked about how that's low percentage. We need to generate a good amount of top spin on our shots because look at what this spin does. You can now clear the net higher. You've taken the whole net out of the game. You see, the law of spin is actually counterintuitive. A lot of players think if they slow their swings down, that'll give them more control, but it's actually the opposite. What we want to do is we want to really, really focus on the idea that if I really spin that ball, keep that racket head going through, it'll give me more spin and more spin equals more control and more control equals better percentage. All right, now law number four is one of my favorites. It's called law of the sword. And the reason it's called that is because it's all about your weapon, your best shot. Look, tennis, 
can be pretty simple. If I can hit my strength to my opponent's weakness, my percentages go up and their percentages go down. Think of someone like a Rafael Nadal. His strength is his forehand. If you look at his stats, the dude hits forehands all day, every day. Now, if he gets in a backhand rally, he does this all the time. He'll actually step and then he'll slice the ball, this beautiful slice down the line. Nice, safe shot. That then causes the other player to do what? To go cross court. And their cross court goes to his strength. And now he's back, his strength, playing their weakness. In the law of the sword, you want to find out what your strength is, your highest percentage, your best shot is, and hit it over and over and over and over. All right, now the last law is called the law of invitation. And it's really simple. It goes like this. You want to invite your opponent to hit low percentage shots. You see, you already know your strategy. You're playing high percentage tennis. You're going to take that 78 foot court, turn it into a 82.5 court. You're going to hit it over that three foot net and you're not going to change directions. Okay. That's all really good. That's stacking up for you, but you don't want your opponent doing the same thing. So you need to write them a handwritten letter and then give it to them and say, I dare you to go for the low percentage shot. And in fact, I'm going to tempt you to do it. For example, let's say I hit a beautiful cross court forehand whoosh, right there. What I don't want to do is reset back in the middle. Why? Because I'm giving them so much space on the highest percentage shot for them to hit. In addition to that, I'm going to have to run further to get it. That doesn't work out for me. That makes it high percentage for them and their low percentage shot, which is down the line. I'm actually covering it so well, they're not going to do that. So a better thing to do is after I hit that forehand, boom, cross court, I need to reset playing the cross court. Notice there's the hash right there. You give them, I invite you, go down the line because by doing so, you have now trapped them into one, they're having to change direction. Changing directions on a tennis ball is hard to do. Number two, they're hitting the 78 feet. That's a smaller court. Number three, they're playing over the highest part of the net. And number four, they're playing with the line. All of that, low percentage. If you structure your match playing high percentage to their low percentage, guess who's probably gonna win? My money's on you. All right, guys, there we have it. We have five laws that are gonna help you raise that percentage. Hopefully this helped. If it does help, be sure and click that like button and or subscribe. But outside of that, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on court soon.